Okay, welcome to part two. Um, sit back, relax. Shouldn't take too long, but um, okay, let's start off. Right, this is our solar system. And um, as you see here, this is the Sun. These are the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Asteroid Belt, Jupiter, Saturn, that's all I could be bothered to draw. And is, as you can see, the way I've drawn them, um, they're all in the wake of the Sun as it hurtles around the galaxy. And so we don't actually orbit the Sun as in the conventional way that we've been shown with models, you know, Sun in the middle, planets going round in nice, well, mainly circular orbits. Um, this is actually how it happens. And um, first, I might come back to this. But um, as the sun's hurtling around the galaxy, obviously, it's uh, travelling through space at immense speeds. And now what's started to happen over the last three years and is all the cause of what will be Earth expansion is the fact that there is something here. We are coming into something. And... Um, it may be uh, the proton belt that I've heard talked about. It may be, you know, another mini solar system, if you like, referred to Nibiru. We may be in some sort of peculiar orbit with them and with sort of rejoining. But as you can see from this picture, um, anything going into the sun, let's say asteroids, little planets, anything that the sun may sort of fire into, we're not going to see back here. We can't see it. Um, we can't see in front of the sun because we are behind it. We are in the sun's wake. So whatever we're hurtling to, at whatever speed it is, we're not going to see it coming. Um, and I... I and you can download this, you can look on YouTube yourself for this, um, if you look for uh, a video of the sun, you know, they've got these, they put this satellite in orbit to, to look at the sun. And yeah, as far as I know, they've, they've never managed to make anything sort of go to the other side of the sun. I, I, like I say, I'll come back to this theory a bit later and just get on with this thing now. So, stuff is potentially crashing into the sun and we don't see it and what I was going to say is if you look at one of these models of the earth it almost looks like these holes what they call sunspots the start of sunspots are like the indentation because the sun does rotate so we are seeing all sides of the sun but we're not seeing at the impact zone if you like things flying into the sun the sun revolves and then we can see the sunspots, these holes, quite possibly created by, well, I'm thinking in my mind quite definitely now, something flying into the sun and leaving a hole. And of course, anything that goes into the sun is going to head for the centre. It's gravity, isn't it? So if something is flying into the sun, it's going to go... Poof. might be quite hard to get through the sun, it might be quite easy, I don't know, but it's going to go to the centre. And this is going to give the sun additional mass. And the sun's going to get bigger. And, you know, it's going to burn differently. Which I think is one of the signs we've seen, is that the sun is burning brighter. It is whiter. And um, so as the sun increases its mass and its heat, that is going to heat up the earth. So... The earth heating up expands. Hence you have the earth expansion theory. 
Good. So, whatever we're coming into, we're coming into something, that's the cause of it. Earth is expanding, and it's, it started, it's already started to happen. Uh, the earthquake that messed up Japan, I think it was 2011, um, that caused a rupture in the seabed. Japan, where is it? So, earthquake in Japan, right? Cause a, a rupture in the seabed 150 miles long and 15 miles wide. So, that in itself is an earth expansion event. And so, I said, did I say? No, I didn't say. You've got to um, have a look on a YouTube. Just search Earth Expansion and um, watch the video. That's 10 minutes and 2 seconds long. And it's very good. It's very concise. It shows how the Earth has expanded. Um, watch the video, but like the best proof for it is that all the floor under the oceans is much, much newer than the rocks on our continents that we live on. And no, they don't slide around all over the place. They, what's, where the oceans are is where the Earth has expanded before. So the Earth expansion points were all around the Pacific Rim. Okay, you know, when it was Pangaea, all these had moved in. If you watch the video, you can see how they all still they all actually do fit together on the Pacific as well. And as we can see here at the Atlantic, there's a rift going down the middle of the Atlantic, how this is spreading apart here. So we're going to an Earth expansion point again, um, as it has as we have done before. And um, it's along those rifts that the Earth is most likely to expand again because that's what it's done all the last times, and they're probably the weakest points. But obviously inland as well, there's going to be a lot of pressure, a lot of pulling apart as this is going on, and hence we're seeing all these sinkholes um, occurring in America, um, well, all, o all over, sort of focused mainly in the equ equatorial areas, um, that's where it's sort of easiest to expand, but that will travel up north as well. <coughs> but um, the reason the timing has now become, well, we're getting nearer this, this time. Um, the reason we have this timing, if you like, is mainly in fact thanks to work from the Farsight Org project and Cliff High where there's web bot predictions and <coughs> the remote viewing they they set a remote viewing task with some 50 odd people doing remote viewing and some of these are very very good they've proven to work they can place things precisely and they predicted well, they had a look at what some major cities around the world um, in, the, in the date, f future date of June the 1st, 2013. And they, what came up was things like, um, basically, they're sort of underwater, basically. And there's been a sort of a, a mass coastal event. And when this this earth expansion as we've been seeing it slowly happening when it goes when it rips it's going to cause um, um, tidal waves tsunamis there's a load of volcanoes very active at the moment and you know they can cause displacement waves as the volcanoes can blow apart um, and also something else is the 
the steam which is going to be created as magma pours out you know, in such massive amounts it's going to evaporate so much of the sea that and into and absorbed into the atmosphere. You know, some places are going to initially dry up a bit, and then as this all is released back to earth, we're apparently going to have sort of rivers of rain, lakes of rain coming down. You know, and that on top of tsunamis. Well, you know, with this number of people on the planet and in all these coastal areas and the city areas. You can just imagine what it's going to be like. So, and the number 1.2 billion that's come out, it's apparently it's a very precise number, has come out through Cliff's High and what he does, his project. And it's a very specific number, but 1.2 billion people apparently are going to die from this one event. Now, I don't think that's the end of death. I'm not sh sure, but it's not going to be the end of hardship. That's for sure. Uh, the world is going to have to be rebuilt. And there's going to be, apparently there's going to be a lot of problems with nuclear plants. That's going to be a big issue. Um, and all the infrastructure, really. And... Um, so we're going to be left to our own devices and government apparently, you know, they're going to be safely underground by whatever time. Um, so, yeah, time to get your affairs in order. Um, for me, I've coincidentally, it appears I'm going to be absolutely flat broke <laughs> by the 1st of June. Um, business work is all but completely dried up for the moment. Um, and it seems almost quite fitting that when I listened to Cliff High yesterday and sort of came to me, this is, this is it, that it seemed quite fitting that um, I should have just enough money to not leave any debts and um, I'm not sure I can't pay the rent June the 1st not at the moment so if I'm wrong about this um, my life's gonna change anyway <laughs> right but um, also, I mentioned earlier, you know, we subconsciously know these things. And I, you know, without getting into personal boring stuff, I've subconsciously known I've been preparing for something my whole life. And um, I wouldn't say I'm getting any feelings that this is it, in a sense of extra feelings that I've perhaps had before. But um, it all just seems to be fitting into place. Uh, so I am, um, I've got to say, I, you know, I, to keep reminding myself, this, this is happening. You know, not slipping into the norm too much and just keep trying to think, what do I, is there anything I need to do? Before this happens, but I, I feel I'm pretty pretty well prepared. I think. Um, yeah, and um, you know, it's sort of this is putting a lot of things in sense now, especially especially the stuff with you know the being behind the sun, not being able to see what. Because when I was thinking about Nibiru and everything, I was thinking, you know, how could it? How could we be getting so close and no one can see it? But this explains that. This explains that we're always behind the sun as it's moving round. So what we don't see is what's in front of us. We see what's behind us. 
Did you see, uh, have you ever seen a comet in the sky before? You see it there with the tail. I mean, they say it sort of orbited the Earth, but if I just take from what I've seen in the sky, I can quite imagine it's some something that's kind of come, gone close to the sun, but it's managed to get past and it's whizzing the other way or something. Um, right, chemtrails, the, uh, the the whole chemtrails thing, I've mentioned it before, I've talked about it before, what are they, why are they doing it, and this seems to make perfect sense now, and I al always felt when it came out the reason for the chemtrails, it would be something they were trying to do good. And it seems they knew this thing was happening. I mean, as we've seen, it's. I think it seems to happen every 5,000 years or something like that. So, you know, we seem to have this uh, <laughs> catastrophe every sort of 5,000 years or so. Floods, ice ages. This could well cause an ice age if, if after the event... Maybe then the sun, after it's ejected and burnt all these things and burnt them brighter, maybe it has a little weak phase afterwards. Maybe if the planet's a little bit bigger, it's it's colder, maybe. So, yeah, because, I mean, this there's going to be a lot of heat as well, apparently in the prediction for a year or two afterwards. There's going to be a lot of heat. But then that may well flip and then go cold. Who knows what's going to happen. But we've been through it before. And um, so hopefully we'll get through it again. Um, so the chemtrails, I guess they've been doing it to try and allay the effects of heating the planet. So they knew it's heating up. You know, heating up from the core, perhaps as well. So, you know, we have noticed where, I mean, look and look at the weather. And they that all seems to fit with the prophecy. So, I mean, the prophecies that you can read and things and talk about sort of earthquakes and volcanoes. and But, you know, weird weather is mentioned in there as well. Um... Yeah, I think I've done it really. I think that's that's mainly what there is to explain. I didn't really go into the sinkholes much. I mean, you just got to see them. I mean, there's this, you know, trees. <laughs> you can have a tree there, and then it's gone. The entire length of the tree just falls down. And there's, there's this massive swamp one in Louisiana. I mean, watch for duck wave, you'll see them. And they're increasing, becoming more and more. So I would expect, you know, if this prophecy, if, if, this, if this really is going to happen, which I totally believe it is, we're going to see more and more of the same over the next weeks. And the fish dying, yeah. This puzzled me, but this even fits in with this, as, well, it can fit in with this, definite, but it, in my mind this kind of seems to fit quite well. If there's little ruptures um, under the ocean floor, little tears, and magma escapes, you know, it's known to be quite a poisonous thing um, to living matter. Um, you know, probably quite heavy in the heavy metals and things like that. Maybe, I, no, maybe not. But whatever, I, I'm pretty sure it's noxious, poisonous stuff. So the fish get infected by it, maybe because it's going through their lungs um, as they swim. And then they, or they 
eat something or like it's happened with birds as well sometimes it's birds much more often it's fish um, and um, and you know the birds might eat the fish and therefore get poisoned and die that's what I think is happening it's happening in lakes as well so deep lakes maybe they have a little rupture and you know quite possibly some of these deep lakes were originally formed in the last one so this theory it's kind of tying it all together so this is my feeling of what's going to happen and you know maybe the timing isn't accurate maybe they're wrong maybe it'll be another year but it might not be it's what they're saying these people are pinning their reputations on it and then I'm pinning mine on it although I don't know what sort of <laughs> reputation I'm pinning down but yeah definitely It's happening. Alright. I think that's it. Okay. Bye.